Hi, I'm Ann Taylor Pittman, Executive Editor at Cooking Light. Thank you so much for joining us today where we're kicking it back and forth between some of our sister brands to talk about Thanksgiving prep. So we've already seen real simple in my recipes show you how to make pies ahead of time. We've seen Southern Living show you how to make Thanksgiving centerpieces and Extra Crispy has shared a great idea for breakfast casserole. So right now what I'm gonna do is show you something that you can do today, right now, that you can stash in your freezer so that you have a leg up on Thanksgiving. I'm gonna be making whole grain spelt and cornmeal biscuits. They're super easy. Let's get started. So the first thing is I have spelt flour, which I know because it's labeled spelt flour. <laughs> so spelt is an ancient strain of wheat. Um, if you don't have spelt flour or you don't have access, your store doesn't carry it, you can just use whole wheat flour. Um, what I love about this is that um, these biscuits are whole grain. To me, they taste better because they have a more nutty, toasty flavor than regular biscuits. Like I said, spelt is an ancient grain. Some people can tolerate spelt flour better than just whole wheat flour. Um, I say it's worth giving it a try because it has great nutty uh, flavor. So I'm gonna measure out 11 and a quarter ounces. So I have my scale here. Okay, so I put my bowl on, set it at zero. I highly recommend having a kitchen scale. Um, they're pretty inexpensive um, and they're going to help with all kinds of kitchen tasks. Um, when you're baking, especially when you're baking lighter baked goods, precision is so important. If you get a little bit of extra flour when you don't intend to, you can end up with really dry or tough baked goods. So I highly recommend investing in a kitchen scale. So like I said, I'm going for 11 and a quarter ounces. And there I go, I've got it. So um, that's the spelt flour. And next I'm gonna add some whole grain um, cornmeal. I, we just picked this up because it specifically says whole grain. So we know that um, all of the goodness is still kept into the cornmeal. It's not de-germed or de-germinated. Now, my scale, I can tear it back to zero. And I know that I need two ounces of this. So I'm just building in my bowl two ounces of the whole whole grain cornmeal. Hopefully, I'm just gonna go slow and take it easy so I don't over pour. I'm still probably gonna over pour, let's see. Maybe not. Um, like I said, two ounces. What the cornmeal does is just give a little bit of a nice kind of crunch to the biscuits, a little bit of an interesting texture. There we go, two ounces, okay. So if you're just joining us, I'm making some whole grain spelt and cornmeal biscuits. I have 11 and a quarter ounces of spelt flour and two ounces of cornmeal in here. Um, and then I'm gonna add my leavening. So this calls for two and a half tablespoons of baking powder, which is a fair amount, but it's going, you know, it's gonna give these biscuits a nice lift. So if you don't have a half tablespoon measure, just know that a half a tablespoon is one and a half teaspoons. So this is a half teaspoon measure, one, two, three two and a half tablespoons of baking powder. When you have acidic ingredients, we're gonna be adding buttermilk here in a second, you need to add some baking soda, a half a teaspoon, and then a half a teaspoon of salt. So those are my dry ingredients. I'm just gonna whisk those together here in the bowl to get them nice and combined. You don't need to get out a sifter or anything that fussy, just give them a good whisk. And then to that, I'm gonna add a half a cup of chilled butter that I've cut into small pieces. You want the butter cold, that's gonna help create um, a nice sort of flaky texture for your biscuits. And cut it in with, this is a, a pastry blender. It has these tines on it that kinda help you incorporate the butter and break it into smaller and smaller pieces. I'm going to abandon this in a second because um, I actually love to do this by hand and I feel like when you do it by hand, you get a better feel for the texture of your mixture. So just bear with me. So as long as your hand, you're, you're not running a fever, <laughs> your hands are not going to warm the butter up too much. Um, so I'm just kind of working this through, trying to break the butter up into smaller pieces and coat each little pellet of butter with flour. That's gonna create a great texture for our biscuits. Now, I talked earlier about, earlier about weighing the flour and how that's a great, accurate way to measure. 
Um, one thing, and just bear with me, many of you, pro or most of you probably know this, but I'm going to talk about it because we get so many questions about it all the time. So when you see on a liquid measuring cup that one cup is eight ounces, that creates a lot of confusion. What I just measured out with the spelt flour was 11 and a quarter ounces, which equals to about two cups. Now that does not match this idea of eight ounces equals a cup. And that's because this eight ounces, it gets very confusion, confusing. That's actually a volume measurement. That's actually eight fluid ounces, um, which is not a weight measurement. It's actually a volume measurement. If you measure different liquids in a one cup measure, they'll weigh different amounts based on their density. So a cup of water might weigh different or it does weigh very different um, amount than a cup of honey or a cup of chocolate syrup. So the eight ounces on these cups, it's confusing. It's not talking about weight. We get a lot of questions all the time that say, isn't one cup of flour actually equal to eight ounces? Um, and actually that's not accurate. And you could uh, really throw off your baking results if you use that measurement. I hope that wasn't confusing. Um, basically, Today you did how much? I did 11 and a quarter ounces of spelt flour and two ounces of whole grain cornmeal. Okay, and so I've got the butter just kind of nicely incorporated. Like I said, I like using my hands. You don't have to. Um, you can use the pastry blender, but I, I just like working by feel, um, working by hand. Okay, so the butter is incorporated. Again, the butter was chilled, and then I'm adding one cup of fat-free buttermilk. Buttermilk is a great ingredient for baked goods. It adds really deep, rich flavor. Um, it is one of my all-time favorite ingredients. Now, some stores, you know, we're in the South, so buttermilk is easy to find here. If buttermilk is not in your local grocery store, here's a great tip. You can use a combination of Greek yogurt and water to create a great buttermilk substitute. Use three quarters of a cup of Greek yogurt and whisk in a quarter cup of water and that'll give you the nice thick texture of buttermilk. I know a lot of people like to acidulate milk so you can start with two tablespoons of vinegar in your measuring cup and then add milk to equal one cup. I've tried that and I feel like it doesn't quite get as thick as buttermilk is um, so I like the yogurt trick. Um, let's see so I'm just going to get my surface here ready. I'm just sprinkling on a little bit of flour and then I'm going to come back to my dough. So I need to just kind of bring the dough together. I like to work in the bowl, just sort of loosely knead it together just to bring everything together and to moisten those dry bits that haven't been moistened yet by the buttermilk and just get it all to come together as a nice cohesive dough. I'm trying not to work it too much because work, overworking your biscuit dough will create dense and tough biscuits and that is not what we want. Okay, so that's come together pretty well. I have a little bit of dry ingredients left in the bowl, but I'm not gonna worry with those. Um, this dough feels kind of, kind of nice and I want to just work with this. So I'm moving it over here. I like to lay out a piece of plastic wrap because it makes cleanup easy and I've just lightly dusted it with some of my spelt flour and I'm just going to pat this. I'm not using a rolling pin because that could compress the dough, again, which would make for a tough biscuit. We don't want tough biscuits. We want light and fluffy and tall, wonderful biscuits. So patting the dough out helps prevent you from overworking it. Now, I'm trying to work it into a, roughly a 10 by 8 inch rectangle. I'm trying to keep it somewhat square. Um, and here's another great kitchen tool that I think is incredibly useful. I have one in my kitchen, a ruler. You have no idea how many times a ruler comes in handy when you're cooking. So I'm aiming for 8. There, I got 8 by 10. I need to work it just a little bit more. Elongate my rectangle just a little bit more. Again, patting. I'm not rolling. I'm just sort of patting the dough out. It's a little bit tacky, a little bit sticky, and that's not a bad thing at all. If it were um, not sticky at all, it might be a little bit too dry. So, let's see. Oh, that's got me there. Eight by ten. 
Okay, so this makes 16 biscuits. So I'm just gonna take a knife. You could take a pizza wheel if you want. And I'm gonna start by dividing it into quarters. Again, I'm wanting 16 biscuits, so I know that I need to cut each quarter into quarters. And I'm doing this, I'm cutting out rectangular shapes instead of circles because that way we don't have any dough scraps that we have to re-roll. Again, when you re-roll your scraps, so let's say you used a round biscuit cutter and then you've got all those scraps. You re-roll the scraps and then you cut out more biscuits. Well, you're working that dough again and that could create um, a tougher texture. So we're making rectangular biscuits. So the edges, the end pieces, are not gonna be totally rectangular. That's okay. These will still work just great. I'm gonna place these on a baking sheet that I have lined with parchment paper. One of a, a baker's greatest tools ever, parchment paper. Okay, and so, like I said, you can prep these today. You can make this dough and you can freeze it. I would suggest arranging your biscuits on a sheet tray, again, lined with parchment paper, and you can freeze the dough, freeze it like this on the, um, on the baking sheet, and then once the biscuits are frozen, for easier um, storage, you can transfer them to a Ziploc bag, freezer bag, so that they take up less space in your freezer. And then on turkey day, you just pull them out, you bake them from frozen. You'll probably need to add another two to five minutes to the bake time, but they'll do just great. You can also go ahead and bake them off completely, let them cool, and you can freeze them that way, completely baked. And then I would say just for, uh, let them come to room temperature, wrap them in foil, and then reheat them at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes just to get them warm. These I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the oven because we want to eat these pretty soon. It takes only 10 or 12 minutes to 12 minutes to bake these at 450 degrees. So you want a pretty hot oven that's gonna help them rise and puff up. And what you get at the end are these beautiful, I'm gonna wipe my hands some more, sorry. These beautiful um, whole grain biscuits. They're nice and they're tall. I love the rectangular shape because it's a little bit different and for a practical reason because it helps prevent me from overworking the dough. So these are the whole grain biscuits. You can customize these if you like. One of my signature things is to add black pepper and thyme to my biscuits. I love that flavor combination. For this recipe, I would suggest two teaspoons of fresh, freshly ground black pepper and one tablespoon of fresh thyme. That would be delicious. Or just as is, they're awesome. Um, it's a nice alternative to dinner rolls. It feels a little bit more rustic um, and the flavor is just great. I love these guys. You see, they cook up great. They have a nice little sort of um, crunchy texture from the whole grain cornmeal. And these are wonderful. Again, you can prep these today and get a head start on Thanksgiving. So thank you so much for joining. Um, some other brands are gonna go live talking about Thanksgiving prep. Let me look at my cheat sheet here. We're gonna have um, Real Simple going live with Holiday Beauty Prep, Travel and Leisure going live with Best Places to Travel, Food and Wine Talking Turkey, and Real Simple going again with the pie finale. Thank you so much, we'll see you next time. Get ahead on Thanksgiving.